What's up, brah? Today, we head to the Diamond of the Gold Coast in South Florida. Nestled between Miami and Fort Lauderdale is Hollywood, Florida. You might think this classic beach town could have an identity crisis, for it is a city that was named after another famous city and sits between two other beaches that get a lot of attention. But I assure you, Hollywood, Florida is in nobody's shadow. Today, exactly 100 years after a California developer purchased his first parcel of land to develop his dream city, Hollywood, Florida has emerged as one of the top beach towns in the country. In fact, it was awarded a Blue Wave Beach Award, recognizing the nation's cleanest, safest, and most user-friendly beaches. Hollywood is part of the greater Fort Lauderdale region, which includes 23 miles of golden beaches. With comfortable year-round temperatures, the reasons to visit are as abundant as the sun and the palm trees. This will be our first of three videos of Greater Fort Lauderdale. Excellent! We will bike one of America's best beach boardwalks, the Hollywood Broadwalk, a 2.5 mile oceanfront promenade with over 50 restaurants, 30 shops, and three parks, a haven for joggers, bicyclists, and rollerbladers. We'll explore the wildlife of the Gold Coast in Ann Kolb Nature Center, North Beach. Clear to land, runway 27 right. Dania Beach, Port Everglades, Hallandale Beach, and Flamingo Gardens in nearby Davie. We then moved to the dining and entertainment pedestrian friendly district of downtown Hollywood, an arts park at Young Circle. So come relax in, well, I was gonna say the other Hollywood, but no, this is the Hollywood. Hey, what's up, dude? That city in California is the other Hollywood. Or you can come live life to the full in the real Hollywood. Like, totally. Where true outdoor adventure is to be experienced in the clean beaches of Florida, where you can ride a wave. Oh! Or just chill. Paradise awaits. So let's get started. We begin our tour at Everglades Holiday Park. While this is in Fort Lauderdale city limits, it is near Davie and some of the other more inland areas. So we are including it in the Hollywood video. It is here you can take an airboat ride, zip across the river of grass at top speeds on a narrated tour for $37 with tax. Children 3 to 11 is $25. Also explore Animal Encounters, a 45 minute up close experience with five animals, for $40 in photo included. Full service cafe in Delhi on property. Now miles west of Everglades Holiday Park in the city of Davie is Flamingo Gardens. What's up brah? Where you can see more than 3,000 species of rare and exotic native plants in the largest collection of Florida native wildlife, including alligators, bear, bobcats, turtles, eagles, otters, peacocks, panthers, and of course flamingos. You can take a narrated tram tour. Entrance to the gardens is $20 for adults, children 3 to 11, $15. This is well worth it. Talked with John and his son Landon here, a Hollywood resident, enjoying the day at the gardens. They say it's wonderful living here. Yes, it's hot in summer. You deal with a little traffic, but you just adjust. They love the Hollywood region. Flamingo Gardens, however, is not the only place where you can see Panthers. Just 10 minutes up the road in Sunrise, Florida, you can watch the NHL Florida Panthers play at BB&T Center. Currently having a good year tied for first with Florida's other hockey team. Also in Davie is the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino with over 3,100 slots, 200 gaming tables, and a 45 table poker room. At nighttime, a series of orchestrated outdoor music and light show, changing colors choreographed to different songs. The Young at Art Museum recently moved to the Westfield Broward Mall. The history of Hollywood, Florida began 100 years ago in 1921, 
When California developer Joseph Young purchased the first parcel of land to create his dream city. In at that time was just pine forests, undergrowth interspersed with tomato farms and marshland. Within five years, the area experienced a real estate boom, but that ended with a hurricane in 1926. However, with the construction of US-1, the opening of Orange Brook Golf and Country Club, construction along Hollywood Beach and the Broadwalk transforming the shoreline, the railroad running up the coast, Hollywood would come back with a new generation of developers. While Young died in 1934, you can see his vision of a wide boulevard extending from the ocean westward to the Everglades, with man-made lakes paralleling each side of the roadway, and with three large circles along that boulevard. Today, you can actually stay in the very mansion that Joseph Young built and lived in for about 1500 bucks a night. It accommodates 16 guests with seven bedrooms and five baths. I decided to stay somewhere a little less expensive, the La Quinta Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport. It was good, clean room, close to I-95. There's about five La Quintas in the area, and with all of them, pets stay free. Just south of Hollywood is Hallandale Beach, the southern part of the greater Fort Lauderdale region. It was incorporated a year after the 1926 hurricane. Hallandale has many upscale neighborhoods like Harbor Island, surrounded by waterways and nice golf courses. One of those is the Diplomat Golf Resort and Spa on the waterway. And off in the distance, you can see the sky rise of the Diplomat Beach Resort, which sits in the Hollywood Beach city limits. We'll show in just a bit. The city's barrier island includes a one-mile stretch of shoreline bordered by the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway. South City Beach Park, a modern park finished in 2015, features a beach cafe, restrooms, open-air showers, and bocce ball. The beach is nice, but can get very crowded due to it not being very large. Hallandale Boulevard ends at North Beach City Park with the famous Hallandale Water Tower the Hyde Resort and Residences on the north side, and the Beach Club Hallandale on the south side. Due to the sky rises along the shoreline, the sun turns into shade as early as 1 p.m. So if you want some sun, or a parking spot for that matter, you better get to the beach early. The biggest tourism attraction in Hollandale Beach is Gulfstream Park, a combination horse racing venue, casino, dining, shopping, and entertainment village. From April through September, Thursday through Sunday is live horse racing. In the pedestrian friendly village, you can taste some great ethnic food with a combination of both fine dining and casual eateries. Due to the large number of tourists who eventually decide to retire in Hallandale, it has one of the fastest growing populations in Broward County. We now enter Hollywood Beach, the south part of the beach with multiple sky rises. This is the iconic Diplomat Beach Resort that we saw earlier in the distance. Built in 2017, this is a 33 floor sky rise. It has two pools, 25 poolside cabanas, and an ultra modern spa and fitness center. We're gonna start at the south end of the Broadwalk and get on a bike and head north. Jefferson Street is where the Broadwalk starts. There is a larger parking lot here. We have our own bike, but you can also rent a bike at the bike shack. These foot pedal buggies are what Hollywood Beach, Florida is kind of known for. The historic Hollywood Beach Resort, located at the end of Hollywood Boulevard. Within the resort is the Ocean Walk Mall with boutique shops, cafes, restaurants, and bars. In front of the Hollywood Beach Resort is Grumpy Gary's Bar and Grill. Enjoy their vegan California black bean burger under a nice shaded patio area. While this palm tree line brick promenade broadwalk is 2.5 miles long, when you add in the asphalt bike path and road, at both ends, you really have about four miles where you can ride on a paved surface all the way to Dania Beach Pier. McGowan's Oceanside, a tiki bar and seafood restaurant. Bonnie and Reed's, a sports pub with cheesecake, seafood, and pub fare. Mamacita's Latin Bar and Grill. A Haagen-Dazs with high-end ice cream. 
a wide variety of lodging here, from the quaint Hollywood beachside boutique suites to the four-star Costa Hollywood Beach Resort, a chic and modern luxury resort with fully furnished rooms from studios to three-bedroom suites, a 7-Eleven and a coffee store bakery located within the building, as well as a rooftop pool area. A look at Highway A1A as we approach kind of the center of Hollywood Beach. The Margaritaville Resort with a luxury spa, two pools with waterfalls and slides. Also eight casual dining and entertainment venues here, including Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Landshark Bar and Grill. Try some body surfing or paddle boarding on the Flow Rider. Provides great entertainment for the people on the broadwalk watching the surfers wipe out. Oh! On the beach, you can rent cabanas, umbrellas, loungers, or even a luxury day bed. Across the street from Margaritaville, on the Stranahan River, is the La Tub Saloon, a tropical waterfront burger joint and a former gas station. Across the river is Holland Park with boat ramps, bike paths, boardwalk, nature trails, and an observation tower. Back across the river, part of Margaritaville, is the It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere Bar and Grill. The South Beach Lady, a 125-foot luxury yacht, or the smaller South Beach Princess, can be booked for special events. Or take a three-hour dinner cruise with Tiki Queen Cruises aboard the riverboat Star of New York for $68 with dinner or $30 cruise only. Back on the Broadwalk, the Hollywood Beach Outdoor Theater hosts a variety of live performances and dancing. Nick's Bar and Grill, a festive open-air beach hangout, offers casual and American seafood and live music. I'm going to cool off with some ice cream at Surf and Spray. Try some stone oven pizza at Florio's of Little Italy. I want to show you a few of the more smaller, quaint motels on the northern part of the beach. The ones you don't see on the big travel websites. Not overly fancy, but still gives you lodging on the beach. Places you may miss when searching online. Like Diane Oceanfront Suites. Or Ocean Drive Villas. Palms Hollywood Beach Hotels. Swan Hollywood Beach Hotel. The Tide Vacation Apartments on the boardwalk had really good reviews. Or Bogan Villa on the beach, just a few feet from the broadwalk. Or Walkabout Beach Resort on the broadwalk. I chose to show places that look good on the outside and seem to have good reviews, but I urge you to always look at the reviews so that you don't end up in a dump. The broadwalk ends at North Hollywood Beach Park, however you can keep riding. The brick paving just turns to an asphalt bike path. To the left here is Ann Kolb Nature Center, a nature reserve with walking paddling trails through mangroves, an aquarium, and an observation tower. I have to apologize that I did not get more video of it. Just missed it. A lack of proper research. So I just have to show you in pictures, but one of the great attractions of Hollywood. The North Hollywood Beach Park located at the end of Sheridan Street. A 56-acre park with sea turtle exhibits, an observation tower. Plenty of parking here, but it is $10 per vehicle all day, or $6 after 2 p.m. Zach's Snacks is located within the park on the beach side, a nice wooden patio deck. On the Intracoastal Waterway side of the park are fishing piers on three long boardwalks over the Intracoastal. Hollywood Dog Beach is located here. Not as crowded on this part of the beach as you start to see more wildlife in the northern part of Hollywood Beach and Dania Beach, which we are approaching. The bike trail comes to an end at Perry Street. However, it drops you off on North Surf Road and you can bike on that, then take another path to North Beach Road for a total of a mile to the Dania Beach Pier. Off in the distance, downtown Fort Lauderdale, which we are headed to. Check out Super Sea Legs Deep Sea Fishing. 
for family-friendly fishing charters. Since Hollywood, Florida is a little California-esque, you'll find many great options for veggie burgers here. I'm going to order one at the Tiki Tiki near the Dania Bridge with open-air dining on the Intracoastal Waterway. Great atmosphere to enjoy your meal. Mmm, very good. North of the bridge is Dania Beach. Dania Beach has more of a small town atmosphere and a favor among those who live in Broward County. The pier is $2 for sightseeing or $3 for fishing. Really a must do. The pelicans were abundant and tame. They let you come up really close to them without flying away. We are on final approach. Clear to land, runway 27 right. This pier is highly reviewed for great fishing. Check out the catch of this girl. The Dania Beach Pier has a live cam on YouTube, so you can always see what the weather is like here. Search City of Dania Beach Pier Cam. At the base of the pier, the Quarter Deck Restaurant. The Dania Beach Marina across from the pier, just north of the pier, is where you can kiteboard as long as you are 100 yards from land. Rentals and lessons are available at East Coast Kiteboarding School in David. Just north of the pier is Johnson State Park, where there are several miles of trails, as well as the 2.5 mile park drive from Dania Beach to Port Everglades Inlet. The park is a migratory flight path for many species of birds, a resting point as they fly further south. Among the varieties of wildlife found in the park are pigeons, doves, blackbirds, herons, egrets, storks, ospreys. The Whiskey Creek Hideout is both an American bar and grill, as well as a place where you can rent kayaks, canoes, and paddle boards. To explore Whiskey Creek, a 1.5 mile mangrove lined waterway. The Staying Afloat Party Boat docked here. We will see them in Fort Lauderdale next week as well. Drones are restricted here due to Class C airspace at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport. This footage here, as well as Port Everglades, we purchased from Pond 5. So, drum pilots, you don't want to fly here without ATC permission. Port Everglades is ranked as the third busiest cruise port in the world, inconvenient for people flying in to take a cruise, with Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport only three miles away. Currently, the jetty on the Dania Beach side at the Port Everglades Inlet is closed, but accessible through Johnson State Park. On the other side, Fort Lauderdale Beach, which we'll visit next week. With quaint sidewalk cafes, brick line walks, and six blocks of unique boutiques, shops, art galleries, and a variety of ethnic restaurants, downtown Hollywood has become a great place to hang out after your day at the beach. The downtown district begins with Arts Park at Young Circle, a large park inside a paved promenade, great for strolling or jogging. There is a children's play area, a splash pad, interactive fountain. The park offers a wide array of visual and performing arts, educational and recreational and entertainment activities, a pretty cool feature fountain, cultural events and concerts happen at the amphitheater here, with lawn seating for 2,500 guests. Also, the Art Walk with live musicians on the third Saturday of every month. There are several murals in the downtown area, and often you can see new murals being created during the Art Walk. Downtown Hollywood, as well as the beach, hosts several festivals throughout the year, from film and music festivals to the classic car festivals. Every kind of eatery is here. Irish pubs, chocolate shops, bakeries, Greek food, Colombian, Chinese. I decided to have shrimp quesadillas at the Overlay Mexican restaurant. You can dine outside on the street patio or inside with a pretty colorful decor on the walls and tables. At nighttime, you can experience South Florida's international music and culture with live jazz, blues, rock, Latin, and R&B bars. Clubs are concentrated tightly here, with a variety of clubs just a few steps apart. <music> 
while there is no walk of fame, no living vicariously through celebrities. Florida's Hollywood gives you opportunities to live your own life, free to create new memories with family and friends, and experience nature. We have put links and addresses in the description below of places of interest to help you plan your Hollywood getaway. Another great source for things to see in the greater Fort Lauderdale area is sunny.org. They also have a paper brochure map that I thought was very good. It had all the places of interest and very well laid out, so I would recommend that as well. In this video, we showed the smaller hotels motels. Give me feedback in the comments below. If that is something you would like to see more of, I always learn so much from your comments. Next week, we move up the coast to downtown Fort Lauderdale, explore Los Olas Boulevard and the Riverwalk, then tour Fort Lauderdale Beach with the Spring Breakers. It's going to be a good one. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel videos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. From the Gold Coast, blessings to you wherever you may be. See you next week in Fort Lauderdale.